Welcome back. Uh, we have our guest standing by for a first major conversation right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Nigeria's federal government through the National Universities uh, Commission yesterday afternoon, we drew it circular, uh, which ordered the vice chancellors, pro chancellors and governing councils to reopening or reopen rather the federal universities across the country. Uh, uh, earlier, circular was addressed to all the VCs, the pro-chancellors and chairman of governing councils of federal universities ordering them to reopen the university. So the second secular, which was also signed like the first one by the director, finance and account of the National Universities Commission, Samo Nazi, uh, indicated the commission was withdrawing the first order, though it did not explain why. Uh, the letter tacked withdrawal of circular, it's, it's cited the number of that circular, which is quite long, I won't go into it, dated September 23, 2022, partly read, I have been directed to withdraw the NUC circular, reference number indicated, uh, dated September 23, 2022, on the above subject. Uh, consequently, the said circular stands withdrawn, all pro-chancellors and chairman of governing councils, as well as vice-chancellors, of federal universities are to please note further development and information would be uh, communicated to all relevant stakeholders please accept the assurances of the executive secretary's warmest regards um, joining us to discuss uh, what can be termed a, a day of a ding dong affair uh, if you want to put it that way is a, a lecturer senior lecturer and a political scientist he's from the Bayero university Colonel professor sani fage it's great to have you back on the breakfast yeah, thank you um, you, you've been you've been in, in in the education sector in Nigeria for a while now. Um, hence, you're with us in a successful career, uh, with, you know, as a professor. Have you seen anything quite like this before? Hello. Yeah, professor, can you hear me, please? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, yes. I mean, you've been around for quite some time in 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 the academia. Have you seen anything like this before? Where, yeah. yeah, you see, yeah, quite okay. I, I've been in the profession for over 40 years. And uh, throughout my stay, I, 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 can say I have seen something similar to this, uh, like uh, the time of uh, Benkida when Asu was uh, banned and uh, we were ejected out of uh, the university campus. And so, the, 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 in terms of draconian measures, I can say, yes, we have seen similar things over time. But in terms of confusion, you know, giving order, withdrawing it, I think this is the first time we are experiencing it. Well, uh, Professor Sani, what would you say, you know, the problem is at this point? Is it that we don't understand the dynamics of uh, education? What exactly could it be? Is it really true yeah. that you know we don't uh, we don't really have the resources? Because that's what the government is saying. And I mean, the questions are almost endless. But I want you to answer in this light: Are the concerns of ASU not valid? I mean, the issues that are asking for is it rational? What exactly is going on? We'd like you to share your thoughts. Yeah, you see. Uh I, I believe it is rational because over the time we have seen how the system deteriorated uh, to such a level that uh, we sometimes conduct uh, lectures even in open spaces. And I think this is not good for uh, the country because uh, the country cannot develop uh, above and uh, its own educational level. So I think what ASU is asking is not to go into the hands of uh, the lecturers, but to, you know, inject it into the system. And, and the government, which is saying that it doesn't have resources, but at the same time, you know, it budgeted six trillion naira for oil subsidy, which is, you know, a bogus of thing. And, and the other thing, if you look at it, uh, over the years and uh, what the government is trying to do now, it has spent over 16 trillion supporting business people. So if you can just inject uh, uh, less than 10 percent of what you are injecting uh, to private sector, I think you can get, go, go over this uh, problem. But uh, even the government, you know, uh, say there is no money and it is not 
put a lot of money in other sectors, I don't think us will even uh, raise an eyebrow because they will believe that it is a generous thing. But here you are, uh, the government is pumping lots of money, more than 10 times what ASU is asking into the system, and you are still telling uh, the people that uh, you don't have money to uh, inject into the educational sector. And, you know, educational sector, what ASU is talking about is uh, it's about the common man, making it affordable uh, for the poor people. All right. Uh, um, um, what, what do you think is responsible for the U-turn? I think uh, there are two issues to me. One, I think, is the, the legal dimension. You know, the government uh, erroneously or rather wrongly uh, took the case to court, uh, industrial court. And uh, now it also has appealed. And uh, the government sees that if it goes ahead with uh, the whole issues, uh, it may be it will be seen in, as uh, an attempt to uh, do things out of the law. Uh, that is one. Uh, secondly, I think the uh, government has started, uh, uh, you know, listening to opinions that it will be too dangerous uh, for the government to open uh, the universities and to pack the students together and place. So, you know, you are now uh, igniting a time bomb, uh, putting the students in one place, and uh, you are starting campaigning tomorrow, and then doing nothing, I think that will be too dangerous. So, to my, uh, my own thinking, I think these are the major reasons why the government decided to make a U-turn. Yeah, but do you also think that this is connected to the fact that the government, I mean, if you look at it, campaigns will be starting tomorrow. And this might also be connected to um, having some sort of political gains. Do you think that there's any connection with the order that's been um, put out, reversing that order, the U-turn, with the fact that campaigns are no. just starting? Okay. No, I think, I think the idea to reopen was to score cheap political points. Uh, that uh, they are doing something about it after seven uh, months. But uh, now I think they are seeing the, the, the possible consequence of uh, you know, getting the student into the universities and nothing is taking place. So, the, you know, the anger will mount higher and, uh, and you don't know what is going to happen. So I believe... Perhaps the government might have listened to like what the committees of vice chancellors say, and perhaps I don't know whether they might have gotten security reports that it will be too dangerous to allow the student in one place sitting idle. All right. Um, in, in your opinion, the, the legal aspect of this, um, you know, with the lecturers saying that they will not go uh, back to the classroom. When such an order is issued by, is, is given to the NUC, uh, is NUC an independent organization which is able to say, uh, we on our own are issuing the orders? Or are they, do they take directives from the Minister of, uh, of Education? Because I know that, for instance, for uh, any university to be approved, for uh, courses in universities to be approved, the NUC embarks on uh, inspection visits, you know, to, to determine what should be done you know, they would say, okay, we, should, we need more doctors or people with a PhD in the lecturing department of this, in this, this faculty, for instance. Um, does the NUC take directives on what to do and how to carry out its activities from the Minister of Education? Oh, yes, it's true. You know, the NUC is an Ministry of Education. And, uh, you know, the leadership now of NUC is working hand in gloves with uh, the, the, the Minister of Education. So even if uh, it is on personal basis, they will do that one. Uh, and constitutionally and legally, they are under the education ministry directives uh, from the ministry. I think uh, that's why the, the NUC, uh, you know, took what... Uh, uh, it did on, on the issue of uh, the two circulars. Because uh, even if uh, they, they didn't come out say that they were directed, uh, but I think uh, 
is a fact that NUC cannot issue directives without uh, the directive of uh, the minister. And uh, look at it. They just put a director and say, okay, he's the one who is reopening. I direct the university to be open, and he's the one who is saying that uh, the, the, the university should not be reopened. So I think from that one, you see clearly even what you said that he was directed. Uh, I don't think it was just the NUC secretary that directed him. It was uh, uh, from above that uh, he was directed. Well, um, what do you make of uh, the elections? I mean, the elections are almost here. We're talking about 2023, and the schools are still shut down. I mean, students have not returned to the classroom. So uh, how many more months again? It might just look like, you know, this might continue for a long time. Do you think that this would have an implication on the elections, especially... Uh, you know, the choice of who the people would uh, actually cast their vote for? Yeah, I think it will, it will help. But I don't believe that uh, it is going to last uh, uh, long uh, because for political reasons, you see that the politician will come out uh, to do something so that they can score cheap political uh, points. Uh, you know, already the, uh, I think a, a middle ground has been reached, but everybody is, uh, or each side is trying to, uh, you know, it's muzzled. It is all muzzled so that uh, they cannot be seen as, as a campaign to the other. But once the elections are up, uh, started, I mean, the campaign uh, started, so I believe uh, some politicians will take the uh, initiative uh, so that they can score uh, uh, cheap political points. Because they know it, is, it will be dangerous and disastrous for them to keep the students for long to the election period at home because they don't know what will be the consequence of that. Mm. Okay, well, Prof, um, um, so, so we hear that, uh, of course, now let, let's imagine and let's for a second assume that the, the second secular was not issued. Uh, when the pro-chancellors, vice-chancellors, chairman of governing councils meet and then open up the universities, uh, how, how are they able, would they be able to compel the lecturers to go back to the classroom since most of them have been saying that they will not teach, um, they will continue to do their research from home and like one lecturer from the University of Baden said, conduct their uh, community service from home. Um, is there a way for the uh, university establishment the administrators to compel the lecturers if that first circular was what? Was, was held on to, is there a way they would have been able to compel the lecturers to return to the classroom? I don't think they, they have the, the, the support. And they can try to take uh, draconian measures and say, okay, we are not going to pay you, you must come, then you must sign, register, and, and so on. But I think doing that will be counterproductive. Because uh, what Asu is saying is that if the salaries that are withheld are paid, they will now work hard to compensate the missed. Now, if you force them to go, you are now breaking a law. You cannot tell somebody to go and work, you didn't pay him. So at the end of it, the student will be the victims. Even if the lecturers decided to go and work, they will not continue with what they miss, which means people are going to automatically repeat. And those who are admitted newly cannot be admitted. I mean, there's so much things that uh, is there. So I think uh, the, the, the government is, is aware of all these things. That is why they are trying to get, uh, you know, landing, safe landing ground for the system to go. That is number one. Number two, if you look at it, Technically, the universities are not closed. It's only that the lectures are not going to uh, take place, but, uh, you know, administration continues. So when you say go and reopen, they, are, they haven't closed it, so are they going to reopen? It is already open. So I think uh, there are some of the issues that, uh, uh, that maybe the policymakers look at and uh, 
they uh, try to see a, a, a safer way to get around the issue. Um, Professor Sani, do you think that there's a solution uh, to ending the strike action when it comes to ASU? I mean, having uh, lecturers every other time lecturing the students. Is there a possible solution to ending the strike actions by lecturers? Yeah, I think there is. Already, you see, since they reached the agreement of 2009, and, uh, you know, the government has memorandum of understanding, memorandum of action, and so on. Had it been the, the, the government is sincere in implementing uh, these things, I think, uh, will be able to head up uh, uh, strikes like that. Because what they are asking is, funding such amount of money is a long-term plan. You are not going to put it where this year. You can start to implement it gradually, uh, like what uh, 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 former President Goodluck did by putting uh, about $200 billion, I think, uh, so over the years, they could have done and reached that place. But when the government decided to say they are not going to do it, I think uh, that is where my problem. And the other thing is, if you look at it, virtually everything that the uh, ASU tried to do is to try to conform within the laws. Okay? Even on strike, they didn't go of how to adulate like that, they started by giving notice and doing this and so on, so that at least they study the laws and take uh, cover in that one. If not for that one, I think they could have been crushed easily uh, on legal ground. So I think if the government could come down, you know, ASU will shift a little, they will reach in the middle, and uh, the issue of strike will be a thing of the past. Hmm. Um, some... some People suspect that the, the second um, uh, uh, circular was issued as a result of um, probably some some realization that uh, the there is an application by the union ASU, represented by Femi Falano SEN, who is a legal uh, uh, counsel to ASU in this matter. There's an application uh, for there's an appeal before. I think both the National Industrial Court, because that's the Court of Origination, Original Trial, and then the uh, Court of Appeal in Abuja over this interlocutory uh, injunction order made by the National Industrial Court. So uh, some suspect that the second circular could be because of that realization that there's an appeal which was um, accompanied by a request for a stay of execution pending the determination of that appeal on notice. Um, if that, that stay of execution request is denied ASU by the Court of Appeal, uh, whilst the appeal is going on, if that stay of execution request is denied ASU, meaning that the order from the National Industrial Court still holds, uh, would, it, would you expect the lecturers to return to, to work? In yeah, obedience I, to the order, I, yes. told, I told you that uh, what ASU tried to do is to work within the laws. So if the law says that they, they have to go, I mean, the appeal uh, concluded that they have to go, I think they will go. But what is likely going to happen is that the issue of no work, no pay will still stand because legally you cannot expect somebody to work with, while you don't pay him. So at the end of it, we are going to have another uh, crisis. They will reopen. And they will go, but they will not make uh, up what they missed. And they will say, let's start from a clean uh, slate. And that will be too dangerous for the system. I have to go now. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Sani Fage. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Well, Professor Sani Fage is a lecturer and political scientist at Bayer University in Kano. We appreciate you always. And uh, as we you know, approach the political season. We hope that we have your time to share your thoughts. We'll take a break down. When we return, it will be time for us to look at our second conversation with the issue of the national grid collapse. Please stay with us.